In previous videos, I told you that only square matrices have an inverse. Technically, that's true, and there's no getting around it. But certain rectangular matrices can have what's called a one-sided inverse. A one-sided inverse is a matrix that can multiply another matrix to produce the identity matrix, but only when it multiplies that matrix on one side, for example, on the left side or on the right side. In this video, I will explain how to compute this one-sided inverse, which is typically called the left inverse or the right inverse. And I will explain the condition on the rectangular matrix that is required for having a one-sided inverse. Let's start with a matrix being a tall matrix, meaning it has more rows than columns, meaning M is greater than N. Now the thing is that this matrix definitely does not have an inverse. However, with a bit of creativity, we can come up with a way to multiply this matrix to produce the identity matrix. The key insight here is that although this matrix A is not invertible because it's not rectangular, A transpose A is a square matrix. And A transpose A can, in principle, have an inverse if it's full rank. This will be n by n. And so if we think about this as being one matrix, then it is possible, in theory, there could be a matrix A transpose A inverse such that the product of this product matrix and this product matrix will produce the identity matrix. Now, you have to be careful here. What I'm inverting is the matrix product of A transpose times A. This is a case where it's not valid to apply the inverse to each of these matrices individually because neither of these two matrices, A transpose or A, is on its own invertible. So you can think about this another way. You can set some other matrix to be A transpose times A. So now C equals A transpose A, and now it's not too weird to think about a inverse matrix for C, such that C inverse times C equals the identity matrix. And we know that this matrix C can have an inverse if it is square and if it's full rank. So here's this equation again. The thing is that these parentheses here are necessary because I'm inverting this matrix product. So this inverse gets applied to this matrix product. So these parentheses have to be here. However, these parentheses are not necessary. They're here just for, I don't know, just for like color balance or something, aesthetics. They really don't need to be here. So we can get rid of those parentheses and just have these matrices like this. And now all we're going to do is regroup this expression. So before we were thinking about this as being kind of two objects. This is one object and this is another object. And now I'm going to call this matrix, these three matrices together. This is going to be one object. And then we just think of matrix A as being a separate object. So now this is what's called the left inverse. It's the left inverse because it is a matrix. It's actually you know three matrices multiplied together, but you can think of this as being one matrix. And this matrix multiplies matrix A, and that gives us the identity matrix. And that is the definition of an inverse. So I encourage you to pause the video here, write this equation, except put the left inverse on the right side of A, and convince yourself that that expression will not produce the identity matrix. It's not even a valid equation, actually, when you consider all the matrix sizes. So this expression, this equation, is valid, and it produces the identity matrix only when it's on the left side of A, and that's why it's called the left inverse. But does this really work, or is this too good to be true? Let's think about this again in terms of matrix C being the product of A transpose A. So the question is, when is this equation valid? In other words, what are the conditions on C for it to have an inverse? So I've already mentioned this a minute ago, and you know this from previous videos. The condition for C to be invertible is that it has to be square and it has to be full rank. So that means 
that A transpose A needs to be full rank. And now think back about the section on matrix rank and the rank of matrix products and realize that A transpose A will be full rank if matrix A is full column rank. And matrix A will be full column rank if the columns of A form a linearly independent set. So that's the condition for matrix A having a left inverse. A matrix, a tall matrix, has a left inverse if it is full column rank. In other words, if the rank of matrix A is n, for a matrix that's m by n, where m is larger than n. So this is for a tall matrix. What about a wide matrix like this? Does a matrix with this shape have a left inverse? The answer is no, it cannot, because the rank has got to be less than n. In other words, the, this matrix can never have full column rank so A transpose A cannot be full rank, so this matrix does not have a left inverse. Now, you can probably guess where this is going. There is something called a right inverse for wide matrices. Now, I encourage you to pause the video here, and based on what you learned in the previous few slides, see if you can discover on your own what the right inverse is. So the answer is that the right inverse is formed from basically the same procedure, except instead of A transpose A, we compute A, A transpose. And again, A times A transpose will be a square matrix. And in principle, in theory, it can have an inverse. So A times A transpose times A times A transpose, and then that product inverted will equal the identity matrix, as long as the rank of A is M. And now it's the same story here. So these parentheses are necessary. These parentheses are not necessary. They're just there for, for graphics uh, purposes. So we can get rid of these parentheses and regroup these matrices into calling A one group and A transpose times the product A, A transpose inverse as a separate group. So, and then we just call this the right inverse. And again, this is the matrix such that when you multiply it by A, it will produce the identity matrix. So it's definitely an inverse. And again, I encourage you to pause the video and put this expression on the other side, on the right-hand side of this matrix A. And you will see that the right inverse does nothing. It doesn't even produce a valid expression when it's on the left side of A. And similar to the left inverse, the right inverse exists only when the matrix A is full row rank. So when the rank equals M, then A, A transpose will have full rank. Now I will switch to MATLAB and we can explore the one-sided inverse in MATLAB. Okay, so here we are in MATLAB. I'm going to create a rectangular matrix, M by N for six and three. So here I create a random matrix, or a matrix of random numbers. It is a tall matrix, so it has more rows than columns. So that should already give you a hint as to whether this matrix will have a left inverse or a right inverse. So here I compute A transpose A and A A transpose. And here I compute the ranks. And you will not be surprised at this point in the course to see that both of these matrices have a rank of three even though one matrix, so A, A transpose, is six by six, and A transpose A is three by three. So here I compute the left inverse and the right inverse. So the left inverse was A transpose A, and then the inverse of that, and then times A transpose, the right transpose was basically the flipped version of this. So it's A transpose times the inverse of A, A transpose. So actually, I'll run these one at a time. OK, so this gives us a matrix. You can see it's 3 by 6. So that already seems a little bit intuitively weird, because you might expect the inverse of a matrix to be a square matrix. However, remember that this is a matrix that's multiplying A transpose A. Uh, sorry, it's multiplying A. 
So now let's compute the right inverse. And now this is interesting. MATLAB gives us a warning. It says matrix is close to singular or badly scaled. In fact, the problem here is that we're trying to invert this matrix. This is not an invertible matrix. It's a six by six matrix, but it has rank three. So in fact, this matrix does not really have a right inverse. I mean, not that it doesn't really have it. Full on literally does not have a right inverse. That's because it's a tall matrix. Now let's test. So one or both of these matrices should be the identity matrix because we are multiplying the matrix by its one-sided inverse. And what I'm doing with these lines of code here is computing the explicit inverse of A transpose A. That's the same thing that I did here. And now here I'm just multiplying that by A transpose A. In fact, this isn't really any different from what we did here because you'll notice that we set A left to be the inverse of A transpose A times A transpose, and then we multiply that by A. So this together with this is A transpose A, which is this. So this is just a little bit more of a kind of nice looking, familiar looking format because now these are going to be all square matrices. This is the equivalent to what I showed in the slide when I said you can set matrix C to be equal to A transpose A. So if you think of this as matrix C, then this is C and this is C inverse. Okay, and then the same thing for the right inverse. And again, we get this warning about the matrix being singular. Here, what I do, it's a lot of lines of code here to show different images. And basically I'm just plotting or generating images of all these different matrices. So here is the visual representation of the original image A. It has rank three. And this uh, just confirms what we already know. So it's a tall matrix. Here you see A transpose A, A, A transpose. This is an image of the left inverse and the right inverse. Now we want to see whether one or both of these looks like the identity matrix. So the identity matrix is ones on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. So this is the identity matrix. This is definitely not the identity matrix. This is the matrix times its left transpose, left multiplied by its left transpose. This is the matrix right multiplied by its right inverse. I'm sorry, I think I said transpose here, but I, I meant inverse. So what I encourage you to do now is pause the video, or actually I just have a, a few more concluding remarks. So after the end of this video, come back to this code, make whatever changes you need to this code, such that the matrix will have a valid right inverse. So what do you need to do to create a matrix that has a right inverse that will produce the identity matrix? In this video, I showed you how to compute the two one-sided inverses, and you learned the conditions for the one-sided inverses being valid. The one-sided inverse is used really often. In fact, the left inverse is the primary tool for solving linear models in statistics, and you'll see this in the section on least squares. So these one-sided inverses are not just some bizarre theoretical construct, they have huge application value. Now, if the matrix is neither full column rank nor full row rank, then it doesn't even have a one-sided inverse. In that case, you'll need to compute something called the pseudo-inverse, which I will talk about in a subsequent video.